Welcome to Exomagic Trick 777.75. This is actually a, a second amendment to Excel Magic Trick 777. Actually, it's not an amendment, it's just in one other great trick for some product. 777, we saw 14 examples for some product. 77.5, we saw a bunch of other examples. And in here, we just want to talk about one great use. Now, lots of times, we try to use functions like sum if or count if or sum ifs or average ifs with external workbook references. Now, actually, you could download this work. You can also download this workbook called Source Data for 77.75. Now, let's just see what happens when we do sum if. So, we're going to add with criteria. Well, the range with the criteria and the sum range are on in a different workbook. So, I'm going to Control tab to jump to the other workbook. Usually Alt tab is a keyboard shortcut to jump between open windows. Control tab jumps between open Excel files. All right, so my, if you can see right there, the range that has all the criteria is there. Now notice when you do a workbook, it puts it in square brackets in there absolute, which is fine here. I'm going to type a comma to get to that criteria. And up here, I'm going to type B1, because I know it's in B1 over there. And then I'm going to type comma. And then the sum range is right here. Again, it puts in uh, square brackets on the workbook name, absolute cell references. I'm going to close parentheses and Enter. Now, it's not B1. It's actually B5. Now that works, and sum if, no problem. Sum if can handle a, an external workbook reference like this when the workbook is open. But let's go ahead and see what happens when we close it. I'm going to come over here. And by the way, sum if right here, it's parallel for count if, sum ifs, count ifs with an s, average if, and average ifs. The same problem happens with external workbook references. So I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to Control Tab. And I'm going to close this. Now, it doesn't immediately appear. I can put it into edit mode, but and then like this. And then you can see you get a value error. But I'm going to want to make all these have value errors. So I'm going to close this, save it. And now when I open it back up, first, it's trying to be polite. It's saying, do you want me to update? Which means if the data over there changed, it's saying, do you want me to recalculate it? I'm going to say update. But now these all get val value errors. So we want to see how to build a formula with some product to replace all of these. Now, let's go ahead and do our uh, open up our other workbook. Oh, and now they all magically work. Hey, listen, it's no problem. If you always have your external workbook open, go ahead and use sum if, uh, count if, sum ifs, because they calculate more quickly than the sum product formula. But let's go ahead and build our sum product formula. We're going to have to do array one, array two. Now we're adding here. And there's a column with criteria, store, and a column with numbers to add. So we're going to have to use two arrays. Now we're going to have to build an array with trues and falses, and we have to convert the trues and falses to ones and zeros. So I'm going to use double negative, open parentheses. Now I control tab. I highlight this first column. You can see up here it's that same kind of workbook reference. And then I'm going to type an equal sign, and it's B5. I'm going to close parentheses on that. There's array one comma array 2 is the actual numbers I want to add. Close parentheses. Now we can look right here. So that's looking good. That's looking good. Let's close both workbooks. I'm going to close this one and save it. I'm going to close this other one also. This is the source workbook. And now I'm going to open up my 77.75. It's still, let's ask, and it's just like before to update. I'm going to say update. Mm, that one doesn't work. All these don't work. but some product works just fine. Now, let's go ahead and close this one again. Save. And now I want to open up this source workbook and change uh, this 250 store one to say 500. Con Control S to save and close it. And I'm going to open up this 77.5, right? It's asking us to update. You can see the 330 right here. And sure enough, some product actually went over there and saw the latest data. And um, update it. Now, one thing you want to be careful about 
if I'm looking at my uh, Windows Explorer here, I have these two files together. They are communicating with each other. And so if you move this somewhere else, you can get into trouble. If you have that kind of trouble, you go up to Data, Edit, Links. Now a couple things here, there's the link right there. Update values, well we did that when we uh, updated. Uh, open source, you could open the source this way, and in fact I, I will do that right here. And then you can see that sure enough that all of the other count if and some ifs and the like are actually calculating. But if I go back to data edit links, the important one here is change source. source. If you move the workbook and the two workbooks are not communicating with each other, then you can click this and navigate and find the new location wherever you moved it to. Sometimes it'll find it by itself, but not, not usually. Okay, I'm going to close all this. Now, how in the world, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this. Close this right here, save it and then open it back up. Let's go ahead and see how to do count. Now I'm just going to cheat now. I, d I actually didn't mention this earlier, of course, you probably noticed, but whoa, it has the whole file path, right? Well, of course it has to have the file path name because it needs to go where, go, know where and go and look. Before when we created it and the file was open, it, it just showed us this, the workbook reference in square bracket, but it has the whole file name. Now I'm actually going to copy this whole formula in edit mode, copy, escape. I'm going to come here, edit mode, control V, and counting is simply we don't include array 2 right here. So delete backspace on that. We have just array 1, and now I can close parentheses. That's counting. And so how would you do an average? You just do those two calculations, either both together in a cell or in separate cells like this. So you can get around the fact that sum if, count if, average if, and all the S's, sum ifs and whatnot. You can go ahead and use this. If you had more than one criteria, so if you're trying to replace your sum ifs, then you'd have to do the same array one, array two. And for more about how to build multiple criteria, that 777 has it. So the point of this video, another great use for sum product, is it will see workbook references and update, whereas some if won't. All right, see you next video.